Hi everyone, this is Miss Bufford and this is video number one in our thermochemistry unit and in this video we're going to talk about energy. Your learning goals for this unit are to be able to give real world examples of the use of kinetic and potential energy and chemical and thermal energy and to understand the law of conservation of energy. So what is energy? This can be a tricky thing to define. There are many different definitions for energy, but the most helpful for us right now are the, the, the two that are on the screen. So this first definition says that energy is an elusive quantity that allows a system to influence other systems. And energy is power derived from the utilization of physical or chemical resources, especially to produce light and heat or to do work. Because energy can't be directly observed, we have to use observation of how energy interacts with different substances in different situations and how it can change from one form to another to help us classify and understand it. So let's look at how we classify this elusive force. So here are the simplest ways to classify energy. First, we've got potential energy, which is energy that's not been used yet. This is stored energy. And then we've got kinetic energy, which is energy that um, an object has when it's in motion. And then mechanical energy, which is the sum of all of the kinetic and potential energy that an object possesses that it uses to do work. So let's talk about some forms of potential energy first. So the first one we're going to talk about is chemical potential energy. And this is energy that's stored in the bonds between atoms. And this can be released during chemical reactions. Some examples of chemical potential energy are matches or batteries or the gasoline that you use to power your cars. Then we have nuclear potential energy, which is the energy holding the nucleus of an atom together. And this can be released during nu nuclear reactions. And so here's just the nucleus of an atom here, and you can see um, it's just pointing to some arrows that are showing the strong nuclear force that's holding those particles in the nucleus of an atom together. And this takes a tremendous amount of energy to, to just hold the nucleus of an atom together. And if we were to release that energy, it would be a lot of energy. The next type is gravitational potential energy. Um, this is the energy that an object possesses because of its position. So if, if it's in a position where gravity can act upon it, then it's got gravitational potential energy. And an example would be a skydiver who has not jumped out of an airplane yet. So you can see this person sitting right there on the edge hasn't quite jumped out yet, but she's got that gravitational potential energy because of how high up she is, where she's at. And then elastic potential energy, which is just energy that's stored in elastic objects when they're not in their resting position. Um, some examples would be a slingshot or a spring. Um, if you're using a slingshot and you pull it all the way back and stretch out those um, rubbery strings or whatever they are that, are that are going to allow you to launch whatever object you're trying to launch, um, you've got potential energy there when you're holding it stretched out. And a spring, when you, when you compress a spring, that spring possesses potential energy because if you were to let it go, then it would spring right back to its original position. The most important um, form of energy that we're going to be using in this unit that we talk about here is chemical potential energy. So this thermochemistry unit is all about chemical reactions and you'll see in just a minute thermal energy when we talk about that next. All right, so now let's talk about some forms of kinetic energy. So our first off is our thermal energy. And this is caused by the movement of atoms and molecules in a substance. So the faster they're moving, the more thermal energy they're going to have. And then we've got radiant energy. And this is energy from waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. And this is absorbed or emitted by the electrons of atoms. We've actually talked about this earlier in the year when we talked about electrons um, in our electrons unit. Some examples of both of these types of energy would be uh, the sun. First of all, it's radiant because it's giving off light. 
and it's also giving off thermal energy. Um, and then this other reaction that's occurring in this flask is a luminol reaction, and that's actually an exothermic reaction. It's giving off um, heat, and it's radiant because it's also giving off light. And then the next type of kinetic energy is going to be our electrical energy. And this is caused by the movement or the flow of electrons through a substance. And my example here is going to be lightning. Um, however, the electricity that is flowing through the wires in your house is also an example of electrical energy. Um, but this is also an example of radiant energy because it's giving off light and lightning is, is hot. So it's also a thermal energy. All right, sound energy. This is energy that is transferred via sound waves through the air. And this is actually occurring because of vibrations in the molecules of the air. They're, they're transferring those vibrations to your eardrums. And some examples of sound energy would be, um, or the use of sound energy would be a bat using echolocation. Um, they're waiting for those vibrations to come back to them. Uh, from whatever sub, uh, substance or, or obstacle they're hit, bumping off of. And sonar actually works the same way. All right, and then mechanical energy, which we said before was the sum of all the kinetic and potential energy that's used to do work. And I just went ahead and classified this with kinetic energy. Um, depending on where you look, you might see it by itself. Um, and it's just because it does take kinetic energy. There is movement involved in mechanical energy um, because when we do work on something, we actually have to influence that object in order to, to, for it to be considered work. For example, if I were going to be trying to move a boulder across a big room um, and I was pushing on that boulder and, and it wasn't budging, then I'm not really doing work. Even though to me it feels like I'm doing a lot of work because I'm pushing as hard as I can. But if that boulder is not moving, you're not considered to be doing work on that boulder. However, if I was able to push that boulder even just a little bit, I've influenced that boulder so I've done work on that boulder. So that's the definition of work here. Um, some examples of mechanical energy are a nail um, hammering a, or I'm sorry, a hammer and hammering a nail into wood or some other substance. And then these little kinetic balls that you see sometimes on people's desks or you can buy them at the store where you hold up one ball and you let it go and it hits the, all the balls, but only the one on the other end jumps out. And that's just a demonst demonstrating the energy is passing through all those balls, but it's only influencing that one or doing work on that one at the very end. And so here's just another overall diagram that shows you the breakdown of everything we just talked about. We've got energy here up at the top, and it, we just have a quick definition of um, the power that allows one system to influence another. And then we've got our kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. And the thermal energy here is the one that we're going to talk about the most in our thermochemistry unit. And then over here under potential energy, chemical energy is what we're going to be talking about, which is our stored energy. And then the last thing that we really need to talk about is the law of conservation of energy. And this states that um, energy, the energy, I'm sorry, the, con the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And this means that um, it's just transferred from one form to another when it's used. And some examples of that would be this first one up here where you see the picture of the sun right here. And that sun's radiant energy is being collected by these solar panels and then converted into electricity that we can use in our homes and our, in our appliances, which is then converted to either mechanical energy or radiant energy if it's going into a light bulb. Um, mechanical energy would be going into a fan, maybe like a ceiling fan. And then another example of this would be uh, where energy is being transferred into another form would be photosynthesis. So where radiant energy from the sun is being absorbed by plants and, be, and being used as, as an energy source for those plants to be able to convert um, their nutrients into the sugars that they need to survive. 
right. Thank you for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.